Hey guys, today's cars are going more and more autonomous. So today we're gonna to take a look at the top three technologies that are leading the way. What we have here is a Mercedes-Benz GLC 300 and it has these technologies that we're talking about. So we're gonna use it as a demonstration vehicle. The third technology on our list is blind spot monitoring. And the way that most vehicles do it is using radar. What it does is it monitors the blind spots around the vehicle and indicates either visually or audibly when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. There's a car right here to my left. I'm gonna get up right next to it and a little in front of it so it's in my blind spot. You should see the red Yep, there it is. The red triangle on the side mirror indicates that there is something in my blind spot. And then if I turn the turn signal on to indicate that I'm going to go left, it should give me an audible warning. So let me try that. Yep. So that's how the blind spot monitoring works. Now, if I were to move over towards that car, the car's uh, lane keep assist would kick in and it would, it would break one wheel or two wheels on that side. And, and stop me from going into that car. Or as Mercedes says, actually, it will either stop me from going into that car or lessen the impact. Now the second technology is adaptive cruise control. And the way that system works is it allows the user to set a predetermined speed and a predetermined distance behind the vehicle in front of them. If that vehicle slows down, your vehicle will also slow down. If that vehicle speeds back up or moves to another lane, your vehicle can then speed back up to the predetermined speed that the driver selected. Okay, the next one we're gonna try is the adaptive cruise control. In this Mercedes, it's called Distronic. You can set the Distronic for, let's say, 60 miles an hour. You should see the car in front of me. And I'm gonna decrease the distance between me and the, the car. Okay, yeah, it's holding the distance, so that's that's adaptive cruise control. It's actually my favorite driver assistance aid because when you're on the highway, if you have a long commute, it's really nice. You just set it and you can kind of just focus on steering. It'll do the braking for you. And a lot of cars can actually brake all the way down to a stop and then get you going. So in, in stop and go traffic, that's really nice. Number one on the list is Lane Keep Assist. Now there's actually another variation called Lane Departure Warning, but that's merely a warning system. This Lane Keep Assist will actually help steer your vehicle to stay within the lane lines. All right, let's try this Lane Keep Assist one more time. I'm gonna drift intentionally towards the right, towards that solid white line. There we go. That time I felt the vehicle break and it steered me to the left to get me back in the center of the lane. So that lane keep assist only works if you're not using the turn signal. If you want to cross a lane, you just put your turn signal on and it defeats the system. But if, if it detects you drifting across the lane without the turn signal engaged, it assumes that you're drifting off and not, and not paying attention. So that's when it activates and guides you back towards the lane. It also gives you that little jolt in the steering wheel to wake you up. Now the combination of blind spot monitoring, adaptive cruise control, and lane keep assist allows your vehicle to see the cars around it. It allows the vehicle to accelerate and decelerate, and lane keep assist allows the vehicle to steer itself. So if you combine those three things, the car can virtually drive itself. So these are the foundational building blocks towards autonomous driving. Now we're not quite there yet, but every year the cars are getting better and better at driving themselves. So in the future, you may not need to do anything. The good news is this transmission is pretty smooth. The only time it seems to lose itself is when it's slowing down to zero or taking off from a dead stop. There seems to be a little bit of a hesitation, almost a clunky feel. Some of it I think has to do with the start-stop system. It simply has to catch up with itself and take off. Let's talk about style. I know I'm not exactly the guy who is styling. Roman's the one who's able to get away with wearing pink polo shirts with the collar turned up, but still, look at the cap.